Okay, so carrying on, we've um, obviously we buttoned this all up together uh, and we went around and uh, obviously we put in some little bits of super glue down as a little bit of filler because we had a little bit of spread. So now what I'm going to do is clean up these joints. So the easiest way is just grab yourself a couple of sanding sponges, nothing coarse using the smoothing side, okay, and don't push down, don't try and attack it and just scraping the hell out of it. Just literally let the buffer do all the work and rope over it and what you're looking for is for any areas where uh, there's yellow paint left in abundance and why I say in abundance it's just like down in here let me just bring you all the way in you may be able to see just down the nose here we got now this looks like a gap okay but this is actually super glue that we've used as a filler okay but down here we've got a bit of yellow so we know there's a slight little hole down in there and judging by there's a little bit of white dust in it as well we know that that's a little sink mark and is going to need a little bit more so if we just carry on up this one as well just to check it over it doesn't matter if we sand off the black at the top okay and there we go we're looking like there's probably a little tiny one in there again that we're gonna have to take care of but what you could do is what i'm going to do is put another coat of paint over this okay and then hopefully that will act as it now you might get a little bit of shrink back now by shrink back what we actually mean is um over time as the paint dries it shrinks <coughs> and then before you know it you've got a little gap in there so we just go off around the top here as well now what this is doing is getting rid of any big file marks and you seam lines that are joining the two. Okay, and because it's a sponge, it will curve slightly around the surface. And you shouldn't damage any areas you're doing. Okay, so all we do, we would go all over it, everywhere, just like that, and we're looking for damage. Now, to polish out these actual scratches, what we've got here is the polishing sponge. Okay, and this will get rid of any scratches and imperfections in the plastic. Okay, as we give it a good old rub around here. And obviously it polishes up the plastic back to how it is. Now you can use the white side if you want to go for a real glossy look. If I give this a rub over here, you'll probably see it will come up glossy, more glossy than the plastic itself. Normally is, but there we go. You can probably see that on camera. That's nice and glossy compared to there. You know, obviously we get the... The light reflecting off it you can see it dulls down when it's not on those areas you know so there we go that's that same for the underside so we're taking care of any of these joins and that and bits and pieces now obviously what we've got to do is join the actual this bottom part on here um, but what we want to do really is get all the sort of the messy parts out of the way and this particular bit what we're going to do is going to be using the Aries uh, gum base now these are one thirty second ones now these Originally, I wasn't going to go into too much detail about showing you how I put these in, but it's only when I've been playing with one, I found out they're actually quite a nightmare, so I'll show you how I do it. it a lot of people ask me, why is it you use sort of extra parts? Because really, this detail in here isn't that far off what the kit is, but what these do have, um, these doors for the gum bay, are half the thickness of what you'll find in the kit unfortunately trumpet up this being an old one as well hasn't quite got the tool in to get it very thin yet but these are like whispers and you can probably see daylight through them um, and that's because they're so thin so what we're going to do is install these now the trouble with these is they all come with these big resin blocks on the bottom okay and obviously we'll do a lot of chopping around in the actual guns themselves so he says just grabbing the various tools and bits you're going to need so okay, what we actually have is the actual main part here, this is untouched, we've obviously got these high areas that need to be cut out, so the easiest way to be totally honest is just to cut them off, okay, and these, which are the walls of the ammo bays, are just cutting off the major part of it, okay, so just it makes it a lot easier to sand. Then you come along, coarse sanding stick, and just sand them all flat until you've got it all done like this. Now it's totally smoothed out and everything. Okay, now the big thing that you find around the back here, and this is where I'm going to show you because the instructions don't. This back here of the gun part is actually this bit in here. So if we bring you nice and closer, I can show you what I mean. Okay, this, this rear part in here 
where are you? There you go. Uh, is actually this here. So what you need to do is actually remove this as well and sand it in. Now don't cut it all the way across. So we've got one done here. Okay, so we've just taken it out and then we smoothed obviously all of this completely down. Now you do have to take this side wall out as well. There's a little bit of plastic. We put them both together. You can probably see the comparison. Okay, so we've taken out this bit down here. Okay, then you need to take out this little side bit just down here. All right. Now cutting these out, be very careful as you go through. I used a razor saw and cut along a little bit and then chopped it out, took out the cube and a cube and then the back as well. Very time consuming and then I sanded it in all the way around. And even myself made a slight faux pas and ended up dinging off this top bit up here. It should be like this one, should be absolutely fine, but I've actually knocked mine off. So you have to be a little bit careful as you go around. But when you do, what will happen is it will come along and then it just fits in is a drop-in fit for actually everywhere else okay and then from the top it looks a little like this so by the time we got the guns and this is the other thing with the kit the guns are absolutely lovely we've got them in here these 50 calibers absolutely stunning and we've got some nice barrels for them as well unfortunately you obviously won't really see them because they're going to be inside the wing but we know they're there and everything else so that's the easy bit if you like now the trouble being on the underside as well you think, okay, well, I'll just sand off these marks here, fair enough. But these have to come out as well. These are the gun shoots. Um, okay, these are the mounts uh, for actually where the 50 calibers for the kit parts were going. They have to be removed. And also, does this area just down here has to go as well? So, in comparison, this is what we've done. They're all sanded out, and this part is gone. And then that way, you can actually fit it in, and it will go together. Okay, so we can just pop that one in now. Okay, this one sandwiches on on the top, and then we get this effect down the back. Obviously, I've got to take care of that hole, but as you can see now, it all fits in there a lot more nicely. And then obviously, we have the guns, which will all be in there and get them installed. But that's the problem with it, is really getting this thinned out, this block, and as I say, you can see a bit of chop marks in it of trying to get it around and in there. But as I say, it sorted along and went down. I haven't gone all the way on the inside. You can see there's a little bit of the cast mark compared to the other one uh, just there okay so you can see the sort of comparison between the two but you don't have to completely sand it to a, an inch of its life it's quite happy to be done like that now the thing with ours as well is that we're going to be having uh, working LED lights in the end so what I've actually done is install a little area so we can get the fiber optic in so you might be able to see we've got this groove here that I've made got a groove in the other one now the easy way to do that was to pop them together just for the moment okay just like so then we come in with the drill bit in there nicely and we just drilled in and then that scraped us out these two and we can make them a little bit nicer if needed we've got these two in here we can just scrape them out as is required to make them a bit better but that's it so I wanted to show you um, roughly getting them chopped out and sanded in and everything else because as I said they're not an easy thing to do by any stretch of the imagination okay so now we've got to install these guns now we spoke about obviously getting them off the block and everything so we're all tidied up and all done so what we're actually going to have to do is I've got one done here okay now this one here is one we played around with earlier so I'm going to show you in detail what we've actually done and what we've actually opened up so with the call outs, it's all really, really vague with all of these things. And that's why I said it is the real downfall for Aries. You know, the instructions do tend to be a little bit sort of um, varied, shall we say. So what we need to do first, we need to open up this top panel. So obviously you can see all the gun bay uh, like this one is. Otherwise, you'd end up hardly seeing anything through there. So what we do, we're going to take our little saw. Okay, first we're trying to find it on this very clutter bench. There we go. Okay, now the thing is, you can roughly work it out as you go anyway, because it's not that million miles away from what you have on the kit. So, okay, down here we've actually got this panel here is going to have to come off, okay? These, this panel in the middle, okay? And these two back here, because these we've got resin replacements for all of these, and they're a lot thinner and a lot better detail than these are. And obviously we've got the latches which are going to go on here, which is really important for when you're doing access doors. So first thing we've got is this lump, this edge down here. So we need to work out where that one is. Now the best way to do that is to literally 
coming along with a razor saw. Okay, and we're just going to chip out this little one. Just cut through so we can see it. Okay, and it might look a bit like butchery, this, but uh, trust me, there is method in the madness. So we're just going to come in, a pair of scissors, okay, and cut it up to that panel. Okay, and then obviously we can come down to this one, which is going to cut out this panel. Now I know a lot of people go along and they'll do this with a knife and it'll be very nice, but because we're not going to need them, we can hack that off. Okay, sand this down. Okay, so we're just going to sand the bottom as well. We don't want to bend it as we're sanding it and everything else like that. So we just do it a little bit. Neat up, okay, just like so, and then obviously just checking around in here. It's a very strong standing stick, this one. We can just tidy that up, okay. So now we can do a quick check to make sure we're all aligned in here and it's all going to go in okay. So it's going to sit just like so. No problem with that at all. So next thing you do, we're going to chop out these. Now, if you look at the top of the resin here, you can see there's a step. So there's one here with a hole in it. So we're going to leave that one well alone. So we're just going to follow the panel line that's below it. Okay, and again, snip, cut that one out. Okay, and the full rear one. Same thing again, just clean those up. just to square them off. Okay, then we've got one at the front again, and then we've got two to the rear. Going through the resin parts, we have the two for the rear here, so we know that this one can come out. And then it should give you something that looks a little bit like the instructions, but it doesn't say exactly how they come out, but that's the type of thing we're going for. And this is it, but we've got two, where they've got one, because I'm not sure exactly how it all buttons up and goes, so I'm not going to risk it. And there we go, that's that one done and in. Okay, so then when you lined it up, you should find it should just all, it's going to sit in there, just like this one does. It'll be all very neat and tidy to how it goes. So we're just checking it again. Just making sure we're all, it all sits happy and lines up. The only thing I want to do is just going to take a little bit off of this edge just down here. So I'm just going to pop in with a razor saw. Okay, so we're just going in like that. It's a bit tricky getting in from the different angles. There we go, just trim that one out. Hopefully it will just sit in here a little bit better. Now this is the thing, now you don't want to go in there chopping away at this because obviously we want to make sure we're all in the right areas and we're all okay. So we're really happy how that one is now. Now that's that bit done. So what we'll do, got some paint already knocked up. This is that cockpit colour that we had before. So if we just bring you in just a little bit. Okay, check the flow. Okay, cut into air first just to blow out any nasties. Okay, and then we're just gonna and important usual thing get in there from all the different angles. Extra loud today. Uh, around the bay, we'll just do the inner lips. Just like so. And you might as well, did on the other one, let's do the underside in this area. And we're just out of paint, so that's about perfect. 
Okay, so we just let that dry. As that's drying, if you have a rummage through your resin bits, you should come up with the guns, okay? Don't do this, literally trim them off nicely, but brute force and ignorance with me. And so we'll just hook them off. So we want three guns. Now, the interesting thing when I was doing the research on the Corsair is how far the guns are back in the wing. And they are literally on the back of the wing, so the barrels only go halfway up the wing with the standard browning. Now, obviously, I know some of you are going to say now, oh, it's not like that, it does this, that, and the other, but for the version we're doing, it is. I know different versions had different cannons, and they were longer, and things like that. I'll just snip this little guy off here. Now, we've got a little thin sanding stick. <laughs> I don't like cutting resin, particularly if I can help it. I prefer to sand it, because I am a klutz, and usually cut far too much off. By sanding it, you don't. Okay, that one's done. Obviously, that, these are the undersides I'm sanding here, so we don't have to be too neat and tidy, because nobody's going to see any of this. This is where it's going to glue down. It's the top part, which is the main part, which are very nicely detailed. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll just get these out of the way. Clean up these bits. Okay, quickly working through. Okay, barrels. You get six, uh, sorry, eight barrels. Obviously, we only need three. Again, you might not want to do this of snapping them off, but one thing I've learned, they're a little bit too long to fit nicely, so we just sand them down just a little bit. Just take the ends off, off of them. Make sure you have got the right end, because one's got a nice hollow gun barrel, whilst the other one's just black and going to be stuck in. But if you sand them back, they lock in become a far nicer join. I think the reason why you get eight, and maybe it's a standard cast part, but I have found a few of them are bent. And obviously being resin, you can straighten it, just be careful you don't overdo it, otherwise you're going to end up with that horrible pink. Okay, just put a bit of glue, just kind of drop that down. Okay, drop on the end, and then straight forward we are going to just mount in the old barrel. This is where you need an extra pair of hands, and just to speed things up, you're just going to go squirt quicker and very quickly straighten it up. I think I missed it actually with the kicker. There we go, one browning gun. Done very nicely. A little trick you can use with kicker if you pre spray the part of one end, okay, dunk the other in glue, all right, so when they make contact, they fuse straight away, normally, he says, hoping, here we go, so that way, as I say, okay, last one, so just quick, okay, go, There we go, those are done. Now, anybody who knows how I paint, you'll understand that normally what happens is I uh, always use, um, um, sorry, for, for acrylics, for general painting, everything else like that. I do like to use alclads, I think they're a lovely thing, but they're very messy. Bit of a problem if you're handling them and everything else. A quick little way is the Guns Sanyo range have done some metals. Now, these are enamel based, but you can brush paint them. Okay, and that is what I like about them, because you can come along like this, you see. All right, and then we can get a clamp at the back of these. And then we can just straight in and paint these. And these are great for hand painting. They're quite thin. This is a metal range, but they work an absolute treat, and you get some stunning effects with them. And you can use them in conjunction with alclads, because before I've used alclads as the base, and then I've gone round and done uh, touch-ups and oversprays to change the tint and the colour and everything with this stuff. 
I won't do all of them, I'll just do the one. Okay, so that's just done like that. I'll do the others later because I've got some out anyway, but just to show you on there. Now you can dry brush that again with an acrylic over the top, so I don't think you're like sort of stuck with that way of doing it. I'll just give the brush a quick clean. Okay, now hopefully this will be sort of dry now. Now for the gun, move those out of the way. Now for this gun itself, for the actual bay itself, obviously ammunition and things like that always can be a little bit of a pain. So there again, this is where these metal colours come in lovely. I've got brass here. Good old mix-up. Okay. Now there's two trains of thought with this. You can either pre-stain um, this up in a moment by using a wash to get it all dark behind or you can sort of do it after. Um, this one here I did afterwards so they get the brassy colour sort of showing through of the ammunition. Um, I put the wash over the top to come through. Trouble is it is quite faint so as I say personal choice if you want to do it before or after. Now a good quality brush for this because this is like dry brushing but sort of in reverse. Okay, because we are trying to paint this on, but basically we come along, okay, we start in the edge and we just run this over the ammo. And then the gaps in between we haven't done will be obviously in with a wash, which will darken them up. Same on this one, but it's like um, dry brushing from both directions. And that way you sort of do the bullets without doing everywhere and you don't want it to sort of totally flood through because they say we're just trying to do this ammo but this brass and this stuff is absolutely great for this we like this um because it's not acrylic it doesn't clump and the bits and pieces drawback to it is still smells and all the things you have with enamel and lacquer base but there we go they're on like that okay then what i did if you take an old cup here okay we take a little bit of brass color Okay, put that down. Then we're coming in with a dark one. This is the iron. Okay, just going to grab a smidgen of iron into this dark, and we're going to make a a funny greyish colour. You can probably see it's a bit of a, this one here, and that way we can do the bullet heads themselves. So literally, same thing again, like a dry brushing moment, and just stroke it all over to do the bullet heads, because obviously there'll be a slightly different shade. Just come in from both directions. Now, if you wanted to, obviously you could do every sixth one as a tracer and all of those bits. Okay, just going to take a tiny bit more of the burnt. So we take that off of here into this goldy colour that we've got knocked up here. So we're just darkening it up. Okay, and then what this is going to simulate is the actual... Um, Obviously you've got the shell, this will be the actual uh, chain itself, the, the linkage, you should say, desperately trying to think of the right word, that goes in between. So all we're going to do then is just lightly dry brush it, right over where those links would be. Now obviously it wouldn't be in a straight line, you probably would get a little bit of movement between the, the rows, so don't worry if you go too far off. But there we go, that's our ammunition all done. So we just put the tops on stuff for a minute. Now I've got just clean the brush up. So the last thing what we can do is actually give this a wash in here. So we'll just get rid of this horrible because we don't want the goldy stuff to come through in amongst everything else. So I've just got a normal wash there. Then what we've got here, this is our pre-made wash. This is basically um, oil paint with turpentine thinners. Okay, this is the um, proper Windsor and Newton type stuff. Great stuff. And the great thing with this, it's got great capillary action and will run around absolutely everywhere. So all we do, we're just going to come along and then we just bring you in nice and close. You can see what we're doing. Okay, so we can just pick out, touch and let the capillary action do the work and just run it round so we can just shade in these different areas all amongst these guns and cabling because what we want to do we want to give it that sort of thing where it obviously it's been used and it's fired and grimy and dirty 
but remember you are going over acrylic here that hasn't been protected so we want it to have that sort of grimy look that will dry a little bit flasher and then what we can do we can just take this as well the camera locks in and we can just give this a run over this ammo okay and hopefully you'll see it will darken up as we go over it and it gives to the shading we were looking for and also it will dirty the ammo itself a little bit more, probably too much there, so we're just going to pop it in. And there we go, that gives us our ammo looking very grubby and dirty as if it would, and we got our bays all done nicely in there. So there we go, pretty straightforward, very easy to do, and I say the ammo, it gives it that sort of grimy type of effect. You don't want bright, sparkling ammo hanging through, especially because we're going to heavy weather the rest of their aircraft. Right, I'll get the guns done and everything else. So we are sort of then, once we're all done, we're looking something like this, okay, in here. So we get those guns done up, and then what it is, we've got some bands and there's photo etched to go all over these here, totally, with the ammo feeding in and everything else. Now, it's all photo etched, it's very, very fiddly, uh, fiddly. And because we're going to have all this, obviously, you're going to have to protect it for painting, we're going to put it on as a final thought with that. So there we go, that's basically the, the weathering up and the things of the gun, so we can protect those, mask them up with tape or blue tack or something else like that, uh, and they're all in. But that gives you an idea of how the guns all fit on the inside, and this is the one with a wonky barrel. <laughs> so there you go, but you can see they don't go all the way through and poke out the end, so don't worry about it. Okay, so the next thing to get on with is all the flaps. Now obviously um, you've got the ailerons and the flaps and the tailplanes and everything else like that, so obviously there's quite a bit of them. Um, and the nice thing about these is they're all movable. Now, quite frankly, I think they're slightly overcomplicated the way of putting these all together, but um, you'll get a rough feel of uh, how it goes in a second. First of all, it's important to clean up the parts really nicely. So by using some sanding sticks and sponges, you can come along and make sure they're polished up. Otherwise, what happens is, one, they don't fit particularly well, and secondly is, um, if you get a little bit of interference, they don't swivel as easy as it would. So also, I've got them all paired up here. All these are going to have to go together. So if we bring you in a little bit, what I've actually got here is this little metal rod. Now this is uh, 47 millimetres, and you've got here, these are the number 7s oh, for this photo etch sheet. Now this isn't like your normal photo etch, this is a lot thicker, really hard to bend. It's not like your standard sort of photo etch you'll see for other things. But these have got all the hinges on them. The number 7, which is the more common one down the bottom here, is what we're using here. So we just snip them out with me scissors. Okay, now that's what we're saying. This is one of those things you don't want to get glue uh, in the actual parts. So, what we do is the easiest way to do this if we do this one just like this, and we want them to be facing it, it's easier just to slip these hinges on the pole. Okay, just pop one on each end. Okay, so you're just on like this, and then just come along and then stick your pole down and just run these to the grooves. So you're sort of in like this, okay, and they should be nice and loose. Okay, no problem at all. Alright, and then you're going to take your super glue, your CA glue. Okay, hold that down and just touch tiniest amount on there, just like that, and they just run your a cocktail stick just to thin it out a little bit, because obviously if it's on there too thick, it won't flow, so you need it to go. Now, I wouldn't use kicker on this, let this dry naturally, it won't take long. Okay, and then it's on there like that. All right, and then you can just come along whichever way you want to do it. <clears throat> so normally we would let this dry just for a moment, but we're just gonna take our thin glue. Okay, we're just gonna put down a, a bit just down this back edge, and a little bit up the top here. And then we're just gonna sandwich these two together very carefully so we don't glue our fingers on. Okay, just pinching it together along and then all we're going to do, same as we do the other, we're holding it up the other way so that if we do get any overspill it doesn't go everywhere. Ok, 
Okay, and it just goes down like so. And the other one. And that's on. And those hinges are shaking nice and loose, so we know when that's attached to the aircraft, we'll get full movement. So we've got to do the same now for all these other ones, and there's quite a few to go on, but it's exactly the same principle. Just make sure you've got the right hinge for the right actual area you're doing, so just keep an eye out on the call-outs on the instructions for which way to do it. So I'm going to go ahead now and get all of these fixed together.